awesome. Well, this is fun. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have to flip this around. Let me flip my camera. Flip camera. There we go. Whee! Now I can see all your comments. Can you see? Yeah, there we go. Good morning, guys. Connected. Stop connecting. Wrong phone. This is so weird. I know you guys can hear me, but I can't hear you. Can't hear you. Don't think about the phone. Stay away from the phone. Got it. So I'm playing around in the uh, in the workshop today, and we have this really old uh, NVR system that we got a long time ago from auction. It's got two dual drive um, bays. And if I unplug it, I can actually show it to you a bit better. What's up user six, eight, one, one, I'm not reading the whole thing. So it's got uh, six of these drive bays, which is great. Uh, but it's got this really, really old motherboard in it. Um, it has standard PCI slots on it, and uh, you know the the problem for me with this board is that I'm having problems booting from this PCIe NVMe slot um, that I want to use in here. Now, what I've currently been using is this little HP Gen 10 4 bay. And it's great. You know, it takes in my eight terabyte drives. It has no problems with that on the motherboard. Um, but it's failing and constantly I'm having to reboot this guy. So I think it's time to, to put him to sleep. And I love this chassis. You know, it's that's probably SATA 3, which is no big deal. I'll take these drives out. I'll put in two more uh, eight terabyte drives. Well, that's just a pile of three terabyte drives, but this eight terabyte drive is dead. <laughs> dead, overheat and click of death is what I wrote on this drive. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm looking to just replace kind of some of the guts for this thing. And I get a lot of computers back from clients when we upgrade them. So I have this HP uh, desktop board. It's got a quad core and already 16 gigs of RAM. But the only problem between this board and that board is I only got three SATA ports on the board. But I do get several PCIe slots down here. And so that's okay, that's good. And I was taking a look through my collection back here. I got a whole bin of PCI crap. And yes, I know some of it's probably damaged and dead. Like, I don't really care about this Radeon graphics card that's just chilling in here. Things I care about are either plastic enclosed or actually in uh, anti-static bags. But, you know, if I care about it, it's gonna be stored better. So anyways, I was going through and I found, found these guys. Hi, honey. The girlfriend heard me and she's like, what the hell are you doing? I'm on live, babe. I know what you're doing. You do? So I have a tiny little uh, PCIe 1X uh, ethernet card. That's good. That no longer works after dropping it. And then I have two uh, PCIe 1X SATA cards. So that replaces that. Again, I don't need SATA 6 or anything crazy, but they're also slim enough that if I take the uh, full height headers off, they'll sit nicely inside of that board. I can already hear you screaming at me. I know they're going to be loose. The controller needs to be bootable and the motherboard's BIOS needs to be supporting booting it. You are absolutely correct. And that's the problem that I'm having with this and why I'm just going to go ahead and replace that board. The, uh, the i7 processor in there is in the 2000 series things really old and I doubt I'm getting a BIOS update that's going to be able to support that. The card absolutely supports that. I've used these exact uh, PCIe cards uh, from down here um, in other systems and it boots uh, just fine. Um, so, right, so I'm going to go ahead and use these. So I'm going to, ow, that's my toe. That hurts a lot. I'm going to move that casing over there. 
Um, so I'm going to transplant this motherboard out of here and into this other one. Although I just realized another problem. This power supply and the uh, DIN connector for this is proprietary. I mean, not really, but it's a six pin instead of the standard uh, 20 pin that's in here. So that's gonna cause a problem. Crap. All right, well, I'm pretty confident that that power supply is not gonna fit in there. So I don't know if I even wanna go down that route. Um, <laughs> you know what? Let's just take one of the, uh, <laughs> screw it. Let's just take one of the giant servers that I have just laying there or the pile of servers that are right here. What is this? Is this a, that's an R710. That's a 820. What do you think? Should we use the 820? That's just laying there. <laughs> oh, that's great. I found a BIOS mod for my 2011 Asus board that adds NVMe booting. Hey, that's awesome. Don't forget the beans. I'm not sure what you mean. <sighs> Anyways, so now I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Um, where did the SSD go that even has? So this has the OS loaded on it that I was running for here. Um, so that already has the ZFS put on it, the software that I want to. Um, the, the whole point of this is just a NAS um, that I actually do seed Linux dis, uh, distros on. Uh, I have a RSS feed from a distro watch that anytime something new is put out there, uh, that it, it pulls that torrent. And I've collectively over the past couple of months done, what was it, seven and a half terabytes of seeding. Um, I'll have to go through the firewall logs and actually pull up those stats for you guys someday, but uh, that'll be fun. Uh, anyways, yeah, so this is going to be kind of a wash. Um, <laughs> or we could take an old MacBook Pro and stick that in there. I'm not sure what the ports are going to give me, but at least I got Firewire on this thing still. <laughs> uh, uh, anyways, all right, well, crap. I thought that was going to be a great idea. Now I don't know what I'm going to do. The darn thing boots, and it's really not that loud, which is fantastic for the server rack that is over here. It might be better to find a standard ATX 4U case and put uh, any motherboard. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Um, but my goal right now is to try and find scraps that I have in the, the, the project room um, and, and try to use that instead of buying new things. Um, I'm really trying hard to pay off all my debt. In fact, I'm selling some stuff that I haven't used in a long time and instead of, uh, uh, it, it, like my Phantom 4 Pro, I just put that on eBay last night. So I'm trying not to spend where I don't have to, to repair things that are, well, not working. But, um, I do have plenty of stuff in the rack that I'm not using. My friend is blowing up my phone right now and, uh, I'm intentionally not answering him because I'm with you guys right now. So, I don't know, I, I don't really use this up here for, for much, and I know it has a motherboard that's compatible, and I know that it has the, uh, the, the, the um, crap, uh, SATA, because it has this eight cage drive tray, uh, chassis. Uh, my, the words just won't come out of my mouth properly. Uh, so I could sacrifice him, he's just running Proxmox, really doing nothing, which he's in a cluster with, oh, well, you can't see it because the art. The six tens down there, but maybe now? No, that's too far down. Um, what do you want to do? Oh, hi, welcome. Um, so let me let's go back over there for a moment. This shit box is dying. I want to use this less shit your box and um, put this guts into this shit box and make it work. But we then quickly discovered that we can't because the uh, the motherboard does not take a power. Oh, he's watching my TikTok right now and blowing up my phone because he wants me to pay attention to him. That's what's going on. Anyways, yeah, so um, this only has four drives. This is starting to die and requires more of a reboot. Um, this has uh, six uh, drives slots on it. 
And uh, I would like to use that because it's just SATA. There's no uh, SFF AD87s on it. Um, so really I could slam any motherboard into here, but the desktop that I had that I know is working isn't gonna work for me. Anyways, which the other thought of that is why don't I stop using that NAS? Let me see if I can just grab my phone here and stop going so super shaky. There we go, that's better. So you guys saw this on a video before, but this NAS down here is full of eight terabyte drives. And so, um, uh, sorry, man, I don't know who you are. Um, I love your networking TikToks, but is that layer your primary field? If not, what is? If that layer, is that layer your primary field? I'm not quite sure what you mean. Uh, ask again. Anyways, yeah, so this NAS uh, is roughly, I don't even remember the math on it. I don't know, someone do eight times 20 in uh, RAID Z2. Uh, actually two RAID Z2 groups. Um, but, uh, so, you know, why not just use this? Well, the other thing is it doesn't have a lot of cash and doesn't have a lot of throughput and because they're mechanical drives, I'm not getting that much out of them. And I really don't want to start thrashing all of these drives when that's my main storage. Um, really, I'd like that little box because I could thrash those drives and I wouldn't care if it's bottlenecked or the IO is latent. Um, really, that box was just for uh, public use. That uh, seed thing, it uh, did a... Uh, what was it called? A uh, transport relay for seed thing? Oh, no, I'm wrong. There's a Mac Mini back here that does that. Um, that that Mac Mini is uh, the Mac Mini that um, is doing my sync thing relay, uh, which did 1.4 terabytes last month, and uh, my Plex. I mean, do you... I meant, do you do other stuff in the application layer, so to speak? Not sure what you mean by application layer. So let me let me explain what I do. I am a an engineer for many things. I own and operate an MSP in Sarasota, Florida. Uh, go back to the rack you want to see. All right. I own and operate an MSP in Sarasota. Um, and so for what I have to do, I need to, to know a lot and kind of be a hat of all hats. My primary training and education is in network engineering and uh, hardware and systems uh, uh, infrastructure. So when it comes to playing around with networks and hardware, um, we had gas drops in our DC last year, wrecking a lot of disks. Yeah. Why do you have an X server? I'll, I'll tell you that story in a minute that actually has a fun background to it. Um, so when, uh, crap, where was I? Right, so anyways, um, Four disks died in a single server, all in different disk spans, RAID 10, all the things. Oh, that's lovely. Um, that's why I like uh, doing uh, cluster RAID groups uh, similar to ZFS or using just straight up ZFS where you can do uh, spans of RAID Z2s. Um, we usually do, we have several enterprises. Uh, we do small medium businesses, we do schools, we do uh, small offices. And we just relabeled our company. So now we have a, a home division and that home division takes care of people that are just one person at a house for, for their own small business. You know, they're small, but they, uh, 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 something exposing your background, something explaining your background, Proxmox or ESI. Um, pr most of the stuff in here is Proxmox. We run EXSI at the data center. Um, ESXI. Whew misspoke that it is just not a word day for me today is it a bones day or a no bones day anyways um so yeah i mean that's we we really service everybody we also started designing and developing our voice app our own voice application um we did that because we didn't want to really resell um anyone's voice application it was just going to be too expensive um and so you know we went in and made our own so that we could sell it to people for really cheap um, in some cases, we'll just do lines of service for people. Other cases, we'll do actual VoIP phones for people or soft phones or whatever people need. Um, it's more of a managed service right now. We're still working on the front end UI for people, but anything that you can do with any other VoIP provider, we can do as well. But because we are the ones that developed it and everyone really gets their own um, cutout of a server. And so we can customize whatever they want. If they, have, if they want CRM integrations, 
Um, oh, you said you got lost. You're explaining your background in network in the networking industry. You got it. Thanks. Um, Things quiet on the bus. <laughs> that's actually the friend that's been blowing me up. Anyways, um, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we really just try to, to help everyone. When it comes to nonprofits and churches, you know, we, we really try to give them a break. We have different pricing for them too, but uh, yeah, that's, that's really about it. That stupid shadow is this stupid cable, by the way, that's going from the rack all the way over to the te test bench. There's uh, six ports on... Uh, on this little patch panel over here that I can just plug into. Let's go take a look at the switch at the back of the rack for a minute. So it's nothing special. It's just a, what is that? SG352, so it's not even PoE. And really it's just got, I think it's less than 10 VLANs on it. But that fiber line just goes over into the, the house closet. Oh yeah, let's go uh, take a look at the house closet. We've never, uh, I've never done a video of that room. Although you may, guys may have saw the ubiquity video from that room. Oh, sorry, it's, it's really tight over here. Oh, I clean that camera off a little bit. That's better. Welcome to the house rack. So, <laughs> um, this is what runs the house. Starting at the top, this is an Eagle Eye uh, bridge. We are an Eagle Eye vendor, and so I, I play around with their uh, camera system here. Uh, 40 gate 60F, uh, dual LAN connected, uh, single LAN connected that goes into the uh, Cisco SG22, uh, sorry, 220. Uh, this is a PoE switch for stuff around the house like access points. Uh, and then I do have some Unify stuff here as well. So my uh, my fiber connection is a business connection that I have five static IPs on down here. Um, so that ONT, I gotta tilt it just a little. Yep, so this ONT feeds this little switch down here. And then any device that I wanna plug into for public IPs um, or WAN uh, goes right into that little switch. So the Ubiquiti Dream Machine has its own uh, WAN connection and then that feeds its own VLAN in the Unify switch. And really all that's for is just for playing with Protect and just playing with updates of the Dream Machine just so I can keep myself updated on it. Because reading is, you know, one thing, but actually playing with it is, is a whole other thing. I have the UNVR because we started with the uh, Unify video cameras, which were upgradable to Protect. Um, and the NVR was cheap and I already had the drives, so it was like minimal cost to me. I think I spent like uh, 300 bucks on it. And I've always had the uh, the 24 port switch. Um, I really liked Ubiquity in the beginning. Um, and you know, I've heard some good things about their Gen 2 products, but uh, I really got to test that. Philips Hue Bridge and a Synology RS-816. Um, that's just a small file server for me. And it really is just a, it uh, replicates a single file, sorry, folder from the bigger NAS. Um, I have a Dream Machine as well. They're honestly fun to play with. I agree, and I do like the interface. They just, they're feature limited. Um, I would not use them in a business. Uh, I saw strategically placed fireworks. <laughs> Fire in the event of being hacked. No, so this room is a dry room. Um, there's a, a dehumidification for this room. And so the fireworks that we don't use from our computerized show on 4th of July, we store in this room as well. Um, so that's, uh, oh yeah. For sure. Um, you know, when it comes to businesses, that I, I have a Fortinet here simply because I can play with it at my home without breaking a customer. And Fortinet is what we use for, for all of our customers. So, uh, yes, I do have Ubiquity, but I don't have... Okay, so the front of the house outside, because I pace around the front yard a lot when I'm on phone calls, has a Ubiquity access point because I've never cared to change it. But the access point that's in the middle of my house is actually a, an Aruba Insta on sorry instant on finish your sentences lol i can't my mind is going a million miles an hour right now um and so i uh through the cost of my company i constantly do product testing and uh the the recent product that i'm testing is the aruba insta on series um i think i'm going to test the the meraki go next time but i gotta tell you man the aruba uh ap6 that they just released Things rock solid. I would absolutely choose that again for my own home if I w wasn't doing uh, product testing. So um, the app is really simple. You can do, if I remember correctly, up to 10 products without a problem. Let me go get the tripod again um, so I can stop shaking around so much. 
anyways, we'll dive in, into stuff in the rack uh, another day. But I uh, also have a switch graveyard over here. And uh, we'll go section by section of this room, I promise. Um, that way we can really get some good uh, footage as to what's going on. What am I doing with this tripod? Oh my god, apparently I can't talk, think, and tripod at the same time. There we go. Hey, look at that. Cool. Okay, so back to this dilemma. So... Come on, come out. This is the card that I want to boot off of. It's just a Samsung 970 Evo Pro. And it shows up in the BIOS, but I can't select it as a boot option. And that's not true. I actually put it in the boot order, and it still won't boot from it. It won't boot from the SSD. I put the SSD in a uh, in one of the drive cages to see if it would boot off of that, because that's just sat on the board. And again, shows up in the BIOS. I did a reset, and I did everything. Uh, I'm interested in Grandstream as a replacement for Unify APs. Um, I, I don't know if I am going to ever test Grandstream access points. Uh, they just, from spec and from cost, I, I'm, I don't, I'm not really just not interested in them. Um, Grandstream makes great phone products and I think they're trying to go vertical in the industry and I'm just, I'm not interested in testing them right now. Uh, who did I miss a comment from? I just built my client with a full ubiquity installation, NVR24, 48-pit switches, cameras, and IPs. Hey, man, that's awesome. Congratulations. We, uh, we still trust their switches for small businesses, um, and we use their access points religiously because it's just really easy to see what's going on. Um, Aruba and ubiquity APs are great. Yeah, there, there's a lot of great players out in the industry. The only time I'm ever going to dislike a product or bash on a product is if we have been consistently able to replicate issues that the vendor is not fixing or changing after we report them to the vendor, and if they still refuse to do uh, to fix anything, then, um, then then yeah, then you know I'll be vocal about it. But uh, um, the mesh APs are great; they're they're limited on their capacity, um, but they're perfect for outdoor. Um, we use them constantly for uh, outdoor installations. Uh, the Red Scare WV. I'm sorry, man. I don't know you. Um, that's a spooky picture. I don't know if I want spooky right now. Um, so yeah, how long have we, uh, how long have we been going? Am I able to see a clock? Do you run an MSP? I do. Uh, the company name is Red One. Uh, it's out of Sarasota. The website is redoneit.net. Um, and, uh, Yeah. This room is mostly just a hobby. Uh, sometimes I'll bring computers back here if I need to work on them or fix them up, but most of the time we're just on client site. Um, from an external hard drive running Linux, how do I format the internal hard drive to run a Windows install? Well, the first thing you have to do is choose where your bootloader is going to be. Um, is it going to be that Linux uh, install or is it going to be your Windows install that has that bootloader? Um, ideally, in a situation like that, uh, I would install Windows as normal first, and then boot to a live distro on a thumb drive and install to your SSD. But make sure that your bootloader selection is not selected for your internal hard drive. Make sure that you're installing the bootloader on the external, so when you boot your computer, you can select with the, your, uh, your boot options from your motherboard which one you're going to, to boot from. Um, now, if you were installing Linux uh, into the same hard drive as your Windows install, then I would go with the Linux bootloader Grub2. Um, uh, yes, we've looked at networks. Uh, I would go with Grub2 um, and just make sure that you install Windows first and pre-partition before you install that Linux because uh, the Linux bootloader will automatically detect your Windows install. Uh, I got you. That's awesome. Use one of those PCs for a Plex server. I have a Plex server. It runs off of an old Mac Mini. Uh, it's a i7 Mac Mini with 16 gigs of RAM, and it connects to the NAS as a data store. Um, and the, uh, the Mac Mini has an external 10 terabyte drive for uh, doing pre-transcoding of some of my you know, 80, 90, and 100 gig files so we can stream them at friends' houses and, and on, our, uh, on our phones. Um, but, uh, but, uh, what'd you say? Support for the Unify software controller is messy. And the next time they drop support for the older APs will switch. So, you know, as a SDN controller, you got to keep in mind, um, how, how much work it takes to constantly support an entire product line. Um, 
uh, if you don't already know, each one of those devices is basically a Linux box uh, running BusyBox. And, uh, you know, every time you're writing firmware or code for that, then you have to also write the SDN controller to support that. And at some point, it's, it's appropriate to decommission products. Uh, and they go EOS and then EOL, and then finally they say, hey, we're just not going to include support in the controller for them anymore. And from a business perspective, I get it, because they're also trying to push people to uh, buying new products. You know, they're, they're a manufacturer. That's, that's part of their job. They're not just a, a, you know, a, a networking software developer. Um, so, you know, I, I understand. And truthfully, you could run an older controller as long as you want. Just go install it on a, either a cloud key, if you still have an older version of a cloud key, or on a Linux box. We still run a controller, what is it, 5.14 for a lot of our, our clients. And we have a, a second controller that we run in our data center, uh, which is version 6, which we keep up to date. Um, because some of the, the newer access points and devices require it. Um, are we going to move everyone over to that version 6 controller? Eventually, but we're not going to put our clients out for products that are working just fine. Now, those stupid Broadcom Square APs, yeah, we went and replaced all of those. The original APs, uh, UACAP or whatever the model was, the, the one that had the green light on it, yeah, we, we replaced that. Yes, but we can't just keep running three versions of the controller to support all the customers. Why not? Seriously, why, why not? It's just three Linux um, uh, boxes that you can set to, to auto update and you just don't update the, the controller version and you just log into whichever controller you need. And if you're doing the cloud-based login, then you see all the controllers right there. Um, and if you're using your DNS properly, you could do unify five dot whatever dot com unify six dot whatever dot com and eventually unify seven dot whatever dot com and just point it to the appropriate server um and you don't have to have different public ips for that you could just point it to, to different ports we're two people and don't have the manpower we started as two people as well um we're uh, we're not much larger than that and uh, it, it it really doesn't take that much my guy and you uh, now with the the newer versions of the controller even in version five you can set auto updates so that you're not having to go through all of those um, but we have other things to do. Oh, I absolutely get it. And, you know, again, so do we. We don't just sit in the Unify controller all day long. That's where automation comes in. Really take a look into Ansible. Those green light ones were honestly terrible, which feels strange looking back on it. <laughs> Dude, I totally get it. Uh, so as a one-man shop, automation and scripting is your friend. Automate the world if you can. Um, that way, when you, you know, if you need something done or, you know, it's a task that's being repetitive to you, that's something, that's honestly an issue that I had a problem with for a very long time is that I always just, I wanted to be involved. I wanted to do everything. I wanted to be hands on and be the one to click it. Yes, I'm ready. Update. Um, we really don't trust auto updating the controller. There's been too far too many issues. Not suggesting auto update the controller. You can schedule auto updating devices with firmware. Um, and the nice thing about it is you can easily roll stuff back from the controller if something goes haywire. You can also schedule it so that Ansible is amazing. You should look into it. Playbooks are straightforward and does Windows 2. Yes, 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 yes. Um, if you are a small shop, you really need to take some time away from the labor that you're doing for everyone and slaving over that to really look into how can you better yourself? How can you better your business? Um, uh, anyways, I will do a whole MSP talk uh, uh, on a different day, but this is not, we're, we're getting too far into the weeds here of business. Um, you know, I have this really old server back here that I built many, many years ago, but I just don't know if that would be appropriate for that system. I don't know. Maybe I'll take the one from the, the rack up there um, and we'll go down that road. But uh, because I have cats, I'm going to cover all this back up. And I think I'm going to call it a day because I actually have tickets that I have to get to. Yes, I want to end my workout. Um... But, uh, well, thank you all for joining me, really. This was, uh, this was my first live, and I think it went pretty well. Um, yeah. So, guys, thank you so much. I really hope you enjoy your morning from, uh, from me here in Sarasota, Florida. Oh, that's backwards. To you, wherever you are in the world. Son of a gun. Did this bend when I put it back down? Um, I genuinely wish that you have an amazing day. And uh, I hope your uh, tickets come easy today, and I hope that many people will reply with, I'm all set, and you can just close out those bad boys. Y'all have a great day, and I'll see you later. Great, now how do I end this? <laughs> Hi from Sweden, thanks for the stream. You are very welcome. I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.